friends, it's The Stitches. Today we're going to talk about some ways that you can convince yourself that you don't need that thing that you are considering buying. So when I go to buy things at a store and I see something I like that isn't necessarily on the list of things that I know that I need, then there are certain questions that I like to ask myself before I consider buying it or not. First of all, would I want it if it wasn't made by X brand? A lot of times when I see things at a thrift store or on Depop, I am partially intrigued by the brand that it's made by. So one of the first questions I ask myself is, would I still be interested in this item if it was made by another brand? If this is an item that isn't made by a flashy brand, but otherwise is really nice quality and seems like it could last, would I be more interested in it if it had a higher end label sewn into it? And on the flip side, if this didn't have this high-end label sewn into it, would I still want it? The next question I ask myself is, is it at least primarily made out of natural fibers? This isn't something that I've always considered, but more recently I've kind of just decided that I don't want to buy polyester. <laughs> Certain things like chiffons are kind of a pass because natural chiffons are very, very expensive and very rare. But I really avoid things like acrylic. I would never buy a polyester shirt ever because armpits are a thing. But if I'm going to say no to an item in store, the main reason is probably going to be because of its fiber content. The next question I ask is, will I still want to wear this item a year from now? My style fluctuates quite a bit. I'm sure many of you have noticed that. So it's important for me to consider, you know, is this, is my obsession with this item a short-lived obsession or is this genuinely something that I can see myself incorporating into my wardrobe for a long period of time? The next question is, will I still want to wear this garment five years from now. Of course that means that the garment is going to have to be able to last for five years. Is this something that I can see myself aging into? Will it look silly if a 30 year old wears this garment? I think there are definitely ways to age into any style gracefully, but there are definitely things that I felt much more comfortable in when I was 18 than I do now. The next question is, does it fit my wardrobe's color palette? I have every color in the rainbow in my wardrobe, but in specific variations. I much prefer cool toned pinks, although I do have a very specific set of warm toned pinks in my wardrobe as well. And I have very specific yellows that I gravitate towards and very specific shades of blue and lavender. So I wear every color, but I don't wear every variation of every color. And that just helps me to be able to match my garments to each other more easily. It's a lot easier to match different colors if they have similar tones. And it's much easier to do that if you only buy colors that have certain tones to them. The next question is, does it fit me? If there is a changing room, I am going to try on every single thing before I even think about taking it to the register. I also just kind of keep an eye on my measurements. I have to do that anyway because I sew my own clothes a lot, so I, I kind of need to know what my measurements are to be able to make clothes that fit me. So if you just keep, have your measurements on a list somewhere, even if you don't have a changing room, you can take a measuring tape with you to the store. You can also ask online sellers what the specific measurements for a garment are. Just kind of be absolutely certain that a garment is actually going to not only fit on your body, but be designed to fit on your body. You know, you, you want your clothes to be flattering because if they're not, if it's just a little bit tight here and that makes it uncomfortable, then no matter how pretty it is, it's gonna get buried in your closet. If it doesn't quite fit me and I want to alter it, is the alteration I need to make something that I can do in a day? If it's going to take me a week to meticulously pick out a zipper that's been surged in, 
I'm not taking that garment home. I am extremely lucky in the fact that I, uh, I know how to do pretty much anything sewing wise. I mean, I'm not necessarily good at every single sewing technique ever, but like I can do pretty much anything that I would need to have done to a pre-made garment. But there's a certain line of what I'm willing to do and what I, uh, what I definitely don't think is worth it. Of course, if you don't know how to do clothing alterations, then that's also something to consider as well. If you have to pay somebody to alter it, that's an extra cost that you need to consider when purchasing that garment. The next question is, are there at least five outfits I can pair this garment with in my existing wardrobe already? If it can't be incorporated into your wardrobe, you're just gonna have to buy a bunch of other things to make it work, and then you have to factor the cost of those garments into that wardrobe as well. The next question is, why do I actually want this item in the first place? Does it actually fit a need that I have? Does it fit into the categories of basics that I keep in my wardrobe? Is this actually something that is going to work or is this an item for my fantasy self? Fantasy garments are great and all, but I am not fantasy Catherine, I am real life Catherine and real life Catherine has real life needs. And I have to consider that when I buy real life garments. The next question is, do I have an appropriate laundry setup for this garment ahead of time? You know, silk is great and all, but I don't want to launder silk. Think about the maintenance that a garment is going to take up and if you're actually willing to do that maintenance. The next question is, do I already have something similar in my wardrobe? If you already have a garment that fills the same need as the one that you're considering, then you actually don't need that garment, do you? Next is, if I decide to part with it, is it something that I can rehome or resell easily? If you're in any particular fashion community, then it's really easy to resell certain types of garments into your local community, but it may not be as easy to sell certain other types of garments into that community. And you may have to consider if you don't want something listing it on Depop or eBay or something like that. And certain items just don't particularly sell well online. Certain brands will obviously have better resale value and certain qualities of garments, certain decades and eras and styles will resell much faster than other styles. Or you might have to think of how you can be able to upcycle that garment into something else in the future instead of donating it if you only have maybe a Goodwill locally and you don't feel comfortable donating to Goodwill because reasons. The next question I ask myself is what occasion does this garment suit? Is this something that I can wear to the grocery store without having everybody stare at me? Or is this something that I can wear to a family barbecue and not have everybody stare at me? Certain garments can really only be worn to certain occasions and how often do those occasions actually pop up in your real day-to-day -day life. If you're part of a local fashion community, like say a local Lolita community, then you will obviously have occasions to wear your big Lolita dresses too, but how often do those meetups happen? And how many big dresses do you realistically need in order to feel, you know, fresh and new at every one? And finally, how is this garment going to show wear? Is this something that's going to pill that I'm going to have to keep depilling over and over again? Is this something that's going to yellow with time and I'm going to have to consider if I'm going to be able to bleach this later on in order to restore its color? Is this something that's going to fade and look grungy as it fades or will it just look soft and pastel as it fades? Is this something that's going to snag on a lot of stuff? And will it look good full of holes or will it just look like garbage? 
You know, there's certainly a time and a place for moth-eaten clothing, but that is not most of the time, so... <laughs> Just consider the long term of that garment and how you're going to have to maintain it in not just a laundry setting, but like a long-term setting. So I wrote this list of all the things that I could think of that I personally do in my own life. And then I thought, I always post these types of videos to the Alternative Fashion Lovers for Sustainability Facebook group. And I get such incredible feedback and have the best conversations over there, so I thought that I would make a post asking what some of you guys do in your lives to sort of convince yourself that you don't need the thing. And while I did get a lot of similar advice to the things that I just said, I think we all pretty much just watch the same few sustainable YouTubers and bloggers and documentaries, so we hear a lot of the same advice parroted back to us over and over again, and here I am parroting it back to you. I did find a few gems that I would like to share with you. Felix Love Kerrigan says, My top rule is that I try to support small businesses run by independent artists. Even if I am buying the clothes anew, these are likely made in small home studios rather than anything resembling a factory. Laura Brown says, before I go hunting for something new, I make a habit to do all of my laundry and organize my closet, and I usually end up finding that I already own something similar to the thing that I need. Colleen Hubbard says, I'm still dealing with this issue, emotional shopping. It hasn't caused much harm to me, but it's a nasty habit. I would buy clothes to reward myself with accomplishments. Buy when I felt ugly or if the work week beat me down too much. Sure, buying clothes may be a temporary fix and last for a little while, but there are better ways to love yourself. A fast fix is not how you should deal with mental problems and you can't hide from yourself under layers of clothes because you will always be nude inside of your clothes. And I just feel all of that. Kel Root listed quite a few things, but most importantly, I want to point to their third question, which is, does it have pockets? And um, that, that is a very important question. I don't know why it wasn't on my list. A person who was requested to be called by their Insta handle, which is classic underscore Andy, says, my first and best rule is only buy it if you love it in all uppercase letters. Not if it looks amazing on you, but you only really like the color. Not if your shopping buddy thinks it looks awesome. Only if you love it and will regret not having it. Some other rules I like to have are, can it be used with at least two wardrobes, work and Lolita, casual and date night wear, etc. Will it match at least five things I already own? And can I find something similar elsewhere for cheaper or more ethically slash sustainably made? And those are also all great points. Cherry Blossom left a really long and really lovely response that I'll put up on the screen, but I don't have time to read all of it off. But I want to key into one of the last things that they shared. And that's that companies will try to trick you into thinking that you need more than you actually do. And that it's important to understand how companies will do that. And that's just such a good point. I did make a video uh, talking a little bit about consumerism and conspicuous consumption. But overall, I just think it's really important to think about how branding and advertising affects how we think about clothing and makes us want things that we otherwise probably wouldn't have even thought of. Tiffany Ferg also made a really great video about uh, advertising in the modern age, and I will link that in the description below for those of you that are interested in this topic. But I do think I want to dedicate an entire video to advertising a little bit later on. Perfect timing. My neighbor just started blasting country music. That is all for today's video. I hope everybody has a good day. I hope everybody found this helpful, interesting, educational, entertaining. And I will see you all next time. Bye!